在多哈非常荣幸的遇到了一位来自芬兰教育部的一位负责人，跟大家来分享一下芬兰教育是什么样子的。让我们让他来给大家打个招呼吧。Hi, Mr. Yoni Nukanasniemi. Thank you. It's a real honor to have you on the show. Thank you. It's a privilege to talk with you today here in Wise Doha. Thank you. Could you please say hi to your audience? Hello, everyone. It's very pleased to meet you all. As you heard, my name is Yoni Kangasniemi, and I work for the Ministry of Education and Culture in Finland. I'm a head of development in the international department. Wow, good. And you know, we are quite curious about what the educational system is like in Finland. Can you yes. tell us more about it? Yes. Um, education in Finland is interest to many people. Uh, in many ways, Finnish education system is very unique. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, it is very flexible system, and it serves every Finn in the in Finland. Oh. How With flexible it is! It's flexible uh, in way that it serves every individual learning needs. Uh -huh. In basic education, everybody completes basic education, and then you can choose between more academic studies and more vocational studies, and then that's the secondary school. That's after secondary that, right? school, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and after that, you can still continue your studies in the university or University of Applied Sciences. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there are no dead ends, and it's serving the learners, not so, so that the learners should adapt what the system is. I see. I see. I'm quite uh, curious about the secondary education there. Yes. Because in China, that's kind of like high school in China. Uh, yes. Because uh, based on my experience as a Chinese, high school students in China face a uh, pressure to, uh, oh, wow, to to work really hard, study really hard in order to pass an entrance examination to yeah. get into college. Yes. Is that the same in Finland? Uh, not necessarily. I've heard about this um, competition in Chinese upper secondary schools, yeah. in, and it seems to be so that you need to memorize a lot of content to be a good student. Yeah, to pass the exams. Yeah, that's yes. something we have to do. Yes. In Finland, we concentrate more on learning, especially in basic education. It's preparing you with, with the basic learning skills mm -hmm. so that later on in your life you can just digest different kind of information uh -huh. and not so much concentrating on, on specific content. Of course there is focus on content because at that age you start to be interested in many fields and that's also when it's important to propose you mm -hmm. for different subjects so that yep. you can find fields that interest you mm -hmm. and what are necessary for the life. I see, I see. So it's like the learning habit, learning uh, matter is really important. Yes. It's important to be taught in the system in yes. Finland. So with that skill or method you have, then you can apply that to any field, anything you are interested in learning. Exactly, ah. yes. And that's, that's also the age when you start thinking, hmm, what am I going to do when I grow up? Yeah. What will I do? And instead of uh, competing and making just what the outside world thinks that I should be doing, mm. it's very important so that you personally feel as well that what I do, I have passion to do that, uh -huh. I, I'm very interested in doing it and I would like to do it. I see. So the, the you really should have this kind of need from 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 the inside yes. to have the passion, so yes. you can initiate the study, yes. not the study taught by your teachers yes. or others. You have to do certain things because yes. you know yourself, right? You know yes. what you like, what you don't like. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. that's good. That's that's a way to really respect the students' choices. Yes. Yeah. Because um, in the future, you need to be more creative, more flexible to yeah. meet the future needs. Yeah. So that's as important than have specific knowledge. Uh -huh. With today, you have always your phone, you get access to any type of information. Yeah, yeah. The only thing is to understand what kind of information that is. It is true, is it false, is it... Oh. So it's more like being critical on the information mm -hmm. and being able to do something with the information and that's what is very valuable in the future. 
good, good. Wow, I totally agree with you. So you shall um, know the method to tell the differences and to, to differentiate what's, what's needed for you, yes. uh, what's useful for you. Yes. Right? So from the massive information out there. Yes. Wow. And still, still in the early years, I mean, that's when you are still building your knowledge base. Yeah. So a lot of um, important things you just need to learn. Yeah. Like the English, they have this clever saying that Which you need to learn the best of the past and be prepared for the future. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Learn the best of the past and uh, then use critical thinking to create something new, right? Yes. To better prepare for the future. Yeah. So we don't, because the old conventional, traditional method is just to memorize everything, teach it, teach. Yeah. It teaches you. Yeah. And then the generation stays the, the knowledge right stays the same. They pass on from yeah. one generation to another generation. But we we don't want things like this. We want knowledge to to grow. Yes. To keep upgraded. Yes. Because okay. I mean otherwise you have all the knowledge but you can't apply that knowledge because if you're a little bit afraid ah, that yeah. it would make a big difference. Yes. But again the companies today that's exactly what they um, want to yep. they don't want somebody else to create the new th new world and then you just copy them and make that mm -hmm. product service available but they need to be on the cutting edge cutting and that's, edge yeah that's the only way to do it i mean learn how to apply the knowledge that you have oh very good very good and another thing i want to know is uh because uh, right now Based on my experience, you know, my niece is in, um, uh, or my nephew, sorry, my nephew yeah. is in the middle school, yeah. and he has a lot of homework to do every day. Ooh. You know, every day he finishes homework at. Uh, sometimes I heard it uh, from from uh, from my um, yeah. uh, cousin, like 10 p.m. even after 10 p.m. on the weekend, and he has to go to some tutoring, uh, to take some tutorings, to take some other classes like piano and math, English, etc. Yeah. So the, the study load is really heavy. Yeah. If, how is it like a, a, a student in Finland? I would say that we have the same learning results with um, even much less hours of studying. Mm. Like my, my son who is now, now in the third grade okay. in basic education, his school day starts between 8 and 10. Mm. and he gets back home around 12 o'clock be or before 2 o'clock. So it's oh. three, 3 to 4 hours a day. So after 2 o'clock the school is finished? Yes, and that then starts to play, be with the friends, or hobbies if you have, if you, if you like into sports, you go sports, if you play some instrument, you might take lessons. Oh. But And of course it's important to, de to extend the school day but every every day when he has some homework, it's between how much 50, is the homework? 15 minutes, 45 minutes. To finish the whole homework yes. for the whole day? Yes. Ah. And actually, now he doesn't have um, that much of uh, homework for every day, but oh. he has weekly assignments. A weekly assignment, weekly homework? Yes. Ah. So he has That's a new. set of Kitchen, I think. Yeah, uh, things that the teacher would like him to do on his own before the next Monday. So ah. it's up to him to decide when to do it. Mm -hmm. So he has all the flexibility to, to plan his week. And he doesn't ah. need to work that late. The only thing I would say that he would have a long day to work with his homework was that if he left everything for one day to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's not the case because um, we know and the research tells that yep. in order to be a good learner you need um, rest, sleep, exercise and good nutrition yeah and if you lack any one of those components you don't eat properly you sleep badly uh, you don't exercise at all your learning just efficiency goes just down jumps. and then you need to study much harder to, to get to Keep the down. same level oh yeah so i mean the more you study the more difficult it gets but having it on a proper level mm -hmm. you can just create in impressive I see. Especially if you're under stress, right? That kind of, uh, you know, yeah. things that may, may happen, cannot that's sleep well. Yeah. Yes, and that hinders learning. Uh, I see, yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. That's good, that's good. And yeah. I have heard that in China you press a lot your children to learn specific things, but again, you would reach the same results with less stress on the child. 
Yeah. And in China, another thing is because you know it's like everyone is doing so. For for teacher, I know some teacher. Um, yeah. Uh, I personally have some friends who are, who, are, who are teaching in high school and also universities. Yes. Uh, to teach them, teach the students certain amount of classes every week, yeah. and it's also common for them to tutor students. Yes. And it's like if they don't do so, for example, other class classes, yeah. other teachers, they yeah. do they do that. Yeah. So they feel like okay, if I don't do so, I'm I own my students certain things I, I, I ought to teach them yes. all the, the because of competition my students competitors will be lower than other students who take the actual lessons courses or tutoring yeah, yeah. maybe two things that I would like to raise one is that, that if you have this strong element of competition yeah it hinders learning you are not learning because you you are competing against your peers yeah. and learning is always sharing your ideas mm. learning from your uh, uh, from, from your friends, peers, mm -hmm. and even from your teacher. I see. Mm -hmm. And the teachers in Finland, they actually don't do any tutoring after school hours because they don't do that. They make to do good job in the classroom, and that is enough, and it should be enough. Aha. Uh -huh. So they don't have kind of the need to no. to have to teach students or make maybe make extra money for their own. No, they are paid average salary and that is enough um, mm -hmm. and if you see that some of your student is lagging behind the group yeah you might provide him some extra lessons just mm -hmm. uh, after 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 the school days immediately after the school days uh -huh. but it would be like half an hour one hour extra it so, ha so that he gets back on the track and follow the class it's uh -huh. a group effort not individual adventure mm -hmm. Wow, that's good. That's good to know. Yeah. Wow. So, as for students, I think it, it, I get a clear idea. It's like the the stress that students and also teachers have in Finland yeah. is not that much, right? So it may really interest some students from China want to maybe study in Finland. Yeah. Any advice, suggestion you can you can give to them? Yes. Um, we would be happy to host some of the students also and come over to Finland to study. Um, if it's done on bilateral way when the universities have a bilateral agreement of sending students to China and from China to Finland that's easy because then you have this um, discussion whether it's six months 12 months that mm. you stay in the country exchange program exchange programs mm. and also I mean nowadays it's also possible to study the whole program in Finland it cost you between 4,000 or maybe most prestigious programs 20,000 and Euro. then the euros yes. ah, okay. mm -hmm. and then the programs are taught in English language oh English is it is the course in English language uh, are the, the ones with, the tuition, fee, with yes. the tuition fee yes and if and also the if it's, it's not in English the tuition fee is uh, in Finnish or Swedish which are the official languages in Finland and you would be accept, accepted as one of the students and it would be actually completely free for you. Completely free? Yeah. Ah, if you but can then speak you a local language. Yes. Ah, is it difficult to speak the language? Well, some say that it is as difficult than Chinese. Oh, Chinese is <laughs> difficult. <laughs> I know. Also, Finnish seems to be difficult. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Also, in the, in the beginning of the interview, I, I couldn't pronounce your name very well. That was... Um, it was very yeah, good, yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> That was a Once you get used to the language, the I've seen people that w within six months they have a quite adequate language skills if they are keen on learning it. I see. Oh, by the way, have you been to China before? Oh yes, actually, I was in China just three weeks ago in oh. in Beijing and in Hong Kong. Oh, one in the north, one in the south. Yes. What's the impression of China? Um, <laughs> I think China is advancing very rapidly. Last time I was in China, it was more than 20 years ago. Wow. Oh boy, and it had changed. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was like any hub in the world with skyscrapers all over. Yeah, in big cities. Yeah, yes. yeah. Shanghai, uh, Hong Kong. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Beijing. I enjoyed it very much. And also, I mean, sometimes the air is not that clean in Beijing yeah, but yeah. luckily just the day before I arrived there were some heavy rains 
Ah. So the sky was completely blue when I arrived. That shows how much uh, China welcomed you. Right? Yes, <laughs> it was very nice, very pleasant. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for thank taking you. the interview and introducing uh, the system and all the useful information to our audience. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I, any other words you want to say to your audience before we finish up here? Uh, it was pleasure meeting you today and whatever you do, do it well, find your passion and follow that. Thank you. Thank you so much.